Cine lenses are getting more affordable by the minute, with companies like Hyrix, Nizi, DZO making some crazy, affordable and beautiful looking lenses. Is it still worth as a filmmaker to invest into photography lenses or shall we just buy only Cine lenses? For the longest time, I actually shot everything on prime lenses. I was pretty much only shooting on a 24 mm from Sigma and an 85 mm from Sigma and I loved prime lenses. Then I kind of moved on to the 2470, still from Sigma, f2.8, and I kind of got lazier when this lens came around because I feel like I could just use this lens 99% of the time and shoot whatever I want with it without ever needing to change the lenses. But now it's been over a year that I'm only shooting 100% of my projects only using Cine lenses. Lenses like this one, the 35 millimeter from Nizi or the 65 millimeter from Irix or 45 millimeter or just a bunch of vintage lenses in general. And the reason why I made this big change is because I wanted to start shooting with lenses that are actually made for video rather than for photo. The thing is, you might be saying like, yeah, sure, like, but you've been shooting everything on Cine lenses and the old prime lenses. So what do you do when you want to just zoom in to get something in your shot? Well, you have to actually physically move yourself, which in my opinion, it's a good thing because you're going to get a different perspective of whatever you're shooting instead of just zooming in from 24 to 70 getting two shots and you'll be done with it so i actually enjoy shooting with prime lenses a lot more it is a little bit more time consuming but to be honest i rather spend time into changing my lenses and get a very specific focal length look rather than just zooming in and you know just going around with one lens i enjoy a lot more filmmaking this way you might be different this is the way I enjoy it. I'm not saying you're supposed to enjoy it the same way. With that said, why can't I get the same image I'm getting from a 35 millimeter, for example, just by switching into a 35 millimeter on a 24 to 70 lens? And the reason is because all of these photography lenses, like this 16 to 35 G Master, kindly borrowed from my neighbors right here. This lens right here, it's a beautiful lens. I used it for a project actually a couple of days ago because I just wanted to be very clean and I didn't want to deal with any lighter autofocus or pulling focus because it was a very long shot on a gimbal and it was a, a real estate kind of interview style. So this just made sense, you know, but why can I get the same look with this lens that I get with this one? And the reason is because this is a photography lens, which means any photography lens you'll ever buy will have a very similar perfect look. And in cinematography, there's not such a thing as the perfect look. You see, honestly, I feel like the more damaged and falling apart an image is, the better the actual footage comes out. And that's why I love shooting with vintage lenses so much because it gives you so much more look and character and adds this to the story of what you're trying to shoot. So yeah, it's really up to you and what are you trying to shoot. But honestly, in my opinion, for my style of filmmaking, for the clients that I'm getting, for the work that I'm doing, cine lenses and vintage lenses just make more sense because I'm trying to reach a specific look. You might be different, you buy me shooting something completely different. So, so this is not a one fit all kind of scenario. It really depends what you're trying to shoot and what I'm trying to shoot. With that said, cine lenses are definitely heavier and bulkier. Like this is maybe this Sony 1635, it's super light, like super light compared to any other lens that I own. Like this Irix, oh my God, this is like double, I think the weight of the 1635. And especially when you travel a lot, you have to know about these things. For example, I travel all the time with my backpack on my back and having all of these heavy lenses can be challenging. But again, in my opinion, it's worth it. For you, maybe it might just not be worth it. Maybe you just get a 24 to 70 and just roll with that. Now, one thing that I wanna also talk about when we're talking about the design is obviously all Cine lenses have this, let me get this closer to you. They all have all this, they all have this uh, focus and aperture declicked gear, which is wonderful because you can change your aperture and focus with a follow focus or a lighter system like I'm doing right now. See, I'm shooting on a cine lens now, but 
doesn't matter where I go. I'm still in focus because I'm using a lighter focus system. And obviously with scene lenses, a lot more things come in handy, like you need to follow focus or you need to know how to pull focus yourself because most of them are manual focus. So, you know, it's not the same experience as just putting the lens on and start shooting. It's a bit more complicated. You have to know what you're doing, but this is the style of filmmaking that I like again. So I think it's worth doing. And with that said, I want to cover one more thing about cine lenses that is very different to photography lenses. And this thing is the aperture. See, let's take this one for example, it's a 65 millimeter T1.5. See, T1.5. So T stop stands for transmission stop, while F stop stands for, I actually don't know. But what I'm trying to say here is that T stop stands for the actual mathematical distance between the sensor and the lens and the aperture. So it's a mathematical stop of light, while f stop is more of a theoretical stop of light. So technically a T1.5 compared to a f1.5 should be a little bit shallower. So let's say a T1.5 is probably like 1.2 or 1.3. Again, I might be wrong, I'm not a scientist and I'm not actually sure 100% about this but this is what I read and this is what I think it is <laughs> and talking about price you know price is something you definitely have to consider because like a 2470 from Sigma is like a thousand dollars while this one focal length is a thousand dollars so to cover the same focal lengths it will be a lot more expensive and obviously you don't need all of the single one but you want to have like a 20 or a 24 and then you want to have maybe a 35 and definitely like a 50 or 45 and then a 65 or a 70. So you need at least four lenses, which is four times the price of, you know, a zoom lens. But, you know, again, it goes down to the point that it really depends from the style of filmmaking that you want to shoot yourself and you want to represent yourself with. So getting at the end of this video, are cine lenses and photo lenses that much different? Absolutely yes. The look, the feel that you get with different lenses, it's completely different. And in my opinion, the cine lens look is a lot better. But this is only my opinion. You might be having a different style of shooting. You might be having a different opinion, right? We all have different opinions. This is the internet. Nobody's right, nobody's wrong. So definitely take this with a grain of salt, maybe rent some cine lenses and test them out yourself. And um, yeah, definitely invest in some vintage lenses though. I feel like vintage lenses are so underrated still. Anyone should have like a good vintage lens set and they're so cheap, like you can probably get a good set for like a thousand dollars. So yeah, definitely invest into that. With that said, I hope you guys like this video. Leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.